Welcome back. This week we're gonna go with the first dry fly that I ever learned how to tie as a kid, and we're gonna tie the quill Gordon. Um, before I get started on that, I wanna touch on the wings. These wings, uh, this is one of the few dry flies where I don't use the snowshoe rabbit. I use the, you know, the mallard flanks. So I wanna touch on that real quick because it's really important. It'll uh, help your wings look a lot better. So I'll zoom in a little bit. I have just a, you know, just a handful of flanks that I picked out. Um, oh, I didn't pick them out. I just grabbed a handful and I threw them on the bench. But what you're looking for in this, you can see this one here. See how there's kind of a steep angle with the fibers. You go to tie this in, when you peel this back, like this you still have a steep angle you go to tie this in and you're gonna have higher feathers on one side of your wing wing case and the other one's gonna be lower and it's just gonna give it a staggered effect it's not gonna really look too good what you're looking for this one is just about a perfect feather um, this would actually be probably going a boogeyman honestly I don't know if I want to tie with this one this is a pretty good feather but this has the nice straight section right across the top. All of these fibers pretty much from the middle portion of the shaft up are all the same length. So when you lay this on the hook, and you'll see what I mean when I get into the time, when I lay this on the hook, my wings are going to be nice and even, and I'm not going to have to do anything special to adjust it. The shaft on this one doesn't run the entire way up. Well, it does. It runs the entire way up, but it's very thin. It's not webbed at the top. If you go to use one of these smaller ones like this, um, this shaft runs the entire way up to the top. So when you go and upright and divide your flies or your wing, one side's going to be bulkier than the other, and it's just not going to look right. If you are going to use something like this, um, marry it up with a similar similar flank and I'll just show you real quick how you would do that if you want to go this way I mean it'll it looks good but functionally it's it's not the best I'm, I'm always afraid of the fibers coming out and having one wing or whatever it may be but it, it it looks really good there's there's no question about that that it looks good but one or two fish and it's probably going to be beat up and you're throwing it away so what you would wind up doing is find two similar mallard flanks and set them opposite of one another and then you would tie it in like this and that would be your wing like I said, it, it looks really good, but functionally it's not that great. It's an option if you want to do it. I, I personally don't, but you can if you want. So anyhow, now we're going to get into the tie-in. I have a Daiichi uh, 1110 dry fly hook on the, on the vise here. This is a size 14. I tie this in 14s and 16s. And if I can find my thread, we'll get going. Um, there it is. So for my thread I have just a white gel spun 50. And we're going to go ahead and get a thread base going here. Tie our tail in first. Uh, same as always, take your thread back to where the barb the hook starts its ascent. Trim off your excess thread. Uh, for the tail, I'm just going to use some uh, done hackle fibers here. So I'm going to peel this back. I don't like that feather. Let's find one we like here. This will do. So probably take six to ten fibers. Have everything nice and straight. Six to ten fibers. Somewhere about that, I would guess. So we're going to measure this out one and a quarter times the length of the hook. And 
and just bring this back right to where you left off with your thread. You can see those fibers probably don't show up at all with my shirt, but you got the picture beforehand and can give you an idea of what we're looking at for length. It wasn't an ideal color for a shirt on this one because if I went dark and you know this is a dark bodied fly and the body wouldn't have shown up, go light and uh, the tail and the hackle doesn't show up as good so I wanted to get the body in there anyhow that's the unique part of this fly so now you know why I'm wearing this color of this shirt because if anybody gave them <laughs> Anyhow, back to the time. Not my wardrobe selection. So, I'm going to go ahead and peel back all of the fibers that are too short. Like I was explaining earlier for this, for this wing. And all of these are going to be within a quarter of an inch of one another. So when we stand this up upright and divide it, um, it's going to have a pretty uniform look. So make sure you peel all of these back, or peel all of them toward the front, grab them with your left hand, and measure this out one and a half times the length of the hook, and tie in your mallard flank. Now, there's a couple of short ones here that I missed, but we'll take care of those in a second. So lay this back and just make a nice cut right to where your tail stops. Don't bring it at a 90 and cut it. Cut this at an angle on the way back and you'll see why as we go back. This is going to help with your taper on the body. Just make some nice loose wraps here. You can see that taper starting to form. And there we go. We got a nice tapered section for our body. You can see that on the way back. Let me put my hand behind this and zoom in some too. Okay, there you can see that taper that we're looking for. And that's all by leaving those that mallard flank back and cutting at an angle this way. So you have some shorter fibers back here, give you some more bulk, longer fibers, fewer longer fibers in the back, and then you got a nice taper. For the body on this one, they have uh, a lot of synthetic stuff out there these days for, you know, these quill bodies and... Uh, they just have, they're like a segmented piece of plastic, basically. Uh, we're going to go with the old school way of doing this, and we're going to take just a uh, regular peacock curl. I'll go ahead and zoom in, and I'll show this here. Hopefully, there we go. So, what you do with this, probably the top quarter section of this, don't use it, it's way too brittle. I mean, you can see it just broke off of my hand. But you're going to take your thumbnail and your pointer finger, and you're just going to run this back to where it peels off all of the small fibers, and then you're left with just... You're left with just the actual hurl of this and you can see it just cleans it up really nice. I have one uh, pre-cleaned here so you don't have to be subjected to watching me clean a peacock curl for a minute and listen to me ramble so you're welcome. <laughs> so but I just wanted to give you an idea how to clean those up and how to get the body material how you want it. Now, before I go any further on this, as always when I'm working with these brittle materials, 
uh, the peacock curl, the quill body, the turkey bots. I'm just going to throw some zap down on top of this and that just it strengthens your body up. It eliminates the possibility of a tooth getting in there and anything like that. So what I should have done before I did that, I should be using black thread, but I like the GSP and I don't have it in 50, so that's what I'm doing. But what I should have done there is I should have touched it up with a black marker. That's all right. I'll just have to be a little more careful with my wraps going forward, making sure that I have one in front of the next. And that way the white doesn't come through. But when you do this, just touch it up with a black marker. It'll make things a little bit easier. But like I was saying, make sure you got one wrap right in front of the next on this. Keep it hard. Make sure you don't have any gaps. And I don't stand my wing case up yet, obviously. Um, it just makes it easier for me to make overhand wraps and it keeps my spacing right. This way I'm not trying to wrap at like a 45 degree angle and I'm able to just go right over top of it and like I said have nice overhand wraps and you don't have to worry about the spacing being an issue that way. So there you can see, I mean, um, I'll zoom in on this. There you can see, I mean, that peacock curl makes a beautiful uh, body. It has like a segmented looking body to it. I mean, it just looks really good. I know the synth synthetic stuff out there, it, it looks great too. I mean, I, I just like this. I, I like the way this stuff looks. And I just, I don't know. I, I tend to use this more so than the, than the, since then, the synthetic stuff. Tough time talking there. So, I'm get my hackle selected here. Um, that looks like it should be pretty good. This is probably a 16. I'm tying on a 14 hook. This is probably a 16, maybe an 18. Like I said before, if you've watched any of my other dry fly videos, the cat scale style um, dry flies, I like to undersize my, my hackle. Um, I just like the way that it rides on the water a lot better. So before I go any further, I'm just going to take and make one wrap around this, these flanks, and then I'm going to build some bulk in the front here. Just build some bulk and we're going to stand these wings upright. So now we're going to upright and divide. Try and get pretty close to half on each side. And we'll go just with a figure eight right through this. There we go. Now if you really want to clean these up, what you can do, and I'll just show you real quick, if you really want to clean these up, you can go one wrap around I really don't know if the camera is picking this up or not I'm going to try to zoom in here and explain this as I'm doing it you can see this one right here the center is more the one that's closer to me the center is more compact and it's not spread out as much but the top kind of fans out so I'm going to see if I can pull this off while I'm explaining this and the camera can see it. 
So I'm going to come behind this. And what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, you see, there's my damn hand. So I'm making one wrap around the base of this wing. So there it is. One wrap around that base. And then I come right behind it. And make a wrap on the actual hook. So then come between, do another figure eight, and then I'll do this other side to where I just make one wrap right around the base of the wing. And that just upright and divides it and it fans it out a lot more. You can see how that looks uh, compared to what it was when I started. So then we just stand this stuff up kind of fan this out a little bit more. One side looks a little better than the other, but we won't nitpick too much. I'll, I'll live with it. So now we can go ahead and tie in our hackle. We'll catch this on the opposite side. Run it right up to the eye. And make sure you leave just a little bit of room there of clean hackle stem. That way, when you make your first wrap, your hackle fibers aren't going to go back toward the tail on your hook. It's going to be a nice, clean wrap at the front. So, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to dub through this body. Or I'm going to dub through the wing case. And I'm just going to take some black dubbing the black and the black and the done hackle kind of offset each other pretty nicely gives a nice look to the fly uh, you can use brown if you want you can use gray whatever just don't leave it white Try and get the hackle nice and even on both sides. You know, both sides of your wing case. Try not to have, I mean, you're going to have to put a little bit more hackle or a little bit more dubbing on the front because there's, you know, we tied our wings in the tail. There's more bulk on the back side, so you'll have a little bit more dubbing on the front of this than you will the back. And then same as any other dry fly. Just start working this through here. I got three wraps in the back. And I'm going to do two in the front. Probably could have got one more, but... I like, I like the hackle pretty sparse, honestly. You'll see a lot of folks tie their dries, and the hackle is really thick. Um, I like mine pretty sparse, you know, probably five to six, I would say six wraps at most of hackle is what I use. So we'll go ahead and cut that off, and then the very last thing we'll do is whip finish. And there we go. I caught one too many fibers there and I didn't like it. It's going to really sparse it up. And I'd have to show you guys an ugly fly. <laughs> That's not going to work. So, there it is. Last step, just any of this white thread that's still in there. I'm just going to touch that up with my marker, and we are good to go. There is the Quill Gordon. Uh, this one wing I'm not too happy with, but I mean, 
It's, I don't know. I, nitpicking as always. It'll fish just fine. But there you have it. There's the Quill Gordon. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments on this, leave them with me. I'll get back to you. But thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you on the next fly.